To understand the magic of Spring Boot further, let's create a simple REST controller in this example. What we'll do is we'll create a simple REST service. I would want to create a REST service with the URI Spring like books slash books and I would want to return a few hard-coded books. Since the Tomcat runs on port 8080 by default, that's what we saw, port 8080. So the URI would be something like http colon slash slash localhost colon 8080. And I would want to return a few hard-coded books. Before we go to the REST controller, let's create a simple bean. So I'll create a new class. I'll call this book. Let's not really make it a lot complex. I'll just say a long ID string, name of the book and string author. We can store a lot more details like ISBN copies and things like that, but let's keep it simple. Let's just have these options which are present in this group, in this book. Let's also create a constructor quickly. And also I would want to create the getters and setters. I don't really want to create a setters, but I would want to add in the getters. So I'll say select getters and I added it in and I'll add in a two string as well. Okay, cool. We have a simple bean defined right now. So we have a bean with ID, name and author. Now I would want to start creating the rest controller. So how do I create a rest controller? I'm, again, it's a Java class and I would want to call this books controller. So I would want this to be a rest controller. I would want it to serve requests, rest requests. So I'll need to use the annotation. Let's import this in. Now I have a REST controller annotation added in. Now I would want to map a URI to it, right? So the one which I want to map is slash books. So I would want to map slash books. So whenever somebody executes a GET request on slash books, I would want it to return a set of hard-coded books. So how do I do that? That's by GET map. So I'm mapping a GET URL. So I'm mapping a GET URL for what? So get is the type of the request. So if you understand HTTP well, then you would know that there are multiple types of HTTP methods, right? Get, post, delete. Get is typically used to retrieve data. So I would want to use get. Let's create a method, so public. And I would want to return a list of books back and get all books. I'll input java.util.list and now I can actually return a simple, I want to create a book. So I'll say new book. I'll uh, use an ID of one and I can use one of the recent books I have written. So I'll say Mastering Spring 5.0 is the name of the book and authored by Ranga Karanam. All that we did is very, very, very simple things, right? Add a REST controller method would handle a GET request to this specific URI. And what we are doing here is we are actually returning a book. We can actually return multiple books if you would want to. For now, I just wanted to keep it simple and I just wanted to return one book back. Now, I would actually go ahead and now start up the server. I'm running it as a Java application, Spring Boot in 10 steps application. The server has started up. And in the log, you can see that there is our mapping has also been picked up directly. So you would see that slash books get method is mapped onto the method which we wrote get all books. So let's see what would happen when I execute the request localhost 8080 slash books. You can see the server respond back with a JSON response. This is a JSON response. ID one, name is Mastering Spring 5.0, author is Ranga Karnam. So this request is actually returning back the details in a JSON format. This is a REST service. The magical part of the whole thing is the fact that we have directly focused on creating the REST service. That's what Spring Boot aims to enable. We have not focused on any of the infrastructure stuff. We did not focus on either configuring a framework or configuring some beans or configuring a dispatcher servlet or configuring a view resolver. We did nothing. But still, magically, this service starts working. How does this happen? That's what we would learn in the next few steps.